The first time I ever made country style beef ribs, I said I will never make pot roast again because they were that amazing. The beef was tender and flavorful and when you served it with mashed potatoes, it was comfort on a plate. But today, I'm gonna take that same recipe and go to the low carb zone. So we're gonna change a few ingredients and make this delicious comfort dish low carb and just a little bit healthier. Welcome to The Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life, using real food, and we keep it real simple. Today's recipe is very simple, and oh my gosh, is it delicious. I'm telling you, if you can get your hands on country-style beef ribs, buy some. They are so much better than a chuck roast. Oh, just amazing. Now, they're not ribs at all, so there's no bones in them. They're actually cut from the loin area of the beef, and so they are a tough cut of meat. So pressure cooking is the perfect way to cook these ribs. And that's what we're going to do today. So I don't want to waste any time. We're going to get right into it. It's a 30 minute pressure cook to get these tenderized. So first let's get them seared up. So I'm going to turn on the Ninja Foodi. You could do this, of course, on a stove top too, if your pressure cooker doesn't have the ability to sear. But the Ninja Foodi we can sear on it. So we're going to use that. Turn that on to put in two tablespoons of any type of oil that you like. I'm using avocado oil because I really want it to be a really high heat. So I'm gonna let it heat up for quite a bit, but you could use olive oil, you could use any oil that you like. Then I have two and a half pounds of these country style beef ribs and I didn't trim them or anything, which is great when you don't have to do a lot of prep, right? Now I'm gonna get them seasoned up and the seasoning blend that I'm using Keep in mind, this is gonna season not only the beef, but the gravy that we're gonna make at the end. And it's gonna be low carb gravy. Oh, it's so, so good. So this sounds like a lot of seasonings, but it is the perfect balance, I promise you. Two teaspoons of fine grind sea salt, one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of onion powder, and one teaspoon of garlic powder. Then just mix those up in your bowl. If you have a spoon, use that, if not, Use your fingers if they're clean. And sprinkle it all over the beef ribs. And then what I will do is toss them around just to make sure that they're coated all the way. You could do this on your cutting board if you want. You could rub each little you know, rib individually, that's fine. But I just find that just doing this is just as easy. Make sure you get all of the rub on these ribs, okay? Because you do want all of that seasoning in there. So these country style ribs are sort of like um, the equivalent of a pork country style rib. So if you ever had those, you know that that is um, kind of like the pork shoulder that's just chopped up so it's boneless. This is the same thing. But let me just tell you, they are amazing. And I prefer them over a chuck roast any day. So I am a huge fan. All right, I'm gonna set those over while we go over the rest of the ingredients here. Um, and first, let me just say that I made this recipe with regular old mashed potatoes and I did layer them. So I did the mashed potatoes on top with the beef country ribs underneath. And then I removed the potatoes, made the gravy out of the liquid that you know the cooking of the beef gave me. And it was, oh my gosh, so amazing. But I wanted to switch over to low carb version. So that's what we're gonna do. So instead of potatoes on top, I'm putting some cauliflower. So I've got a half of a head of cauliflower here in very large pieces. Like this is like a quarter of a head right here all in one, okay? So very large pieces. That was a half of a head, so it's probably about a pound and a half or so. I also have an onion. I am going to leave the onion in, although I think if you're going hardcore keto, you're probably gonna wanna leave it out. But for me, the flavor outweighs the carbs in it, so I am going to use it. And that is one, and I, I'm using a sweet onion, but yellow onion would, would work fine. It's one whole onion there, and I have it kind of big pieces. Let me show you. So these are just big wedges, all right? So again, prep is super easy because you don't have to do any fine dicing. And then I have one pound of baby portobello mushrooms. You could use any type of mushroom you like. You could use uh, sliced uh, white button. You could use the baby portobello. You can chunk them like I did, which is just cut them in quarters. You could slice them if you want them uh, you know, in a slice instead. Totally up to you, will not change the recipe at all. 
All right, let's go ahead and see. Yes, it feels like it's hot there. So before I go through the rest of the ingredients, I'm gonna start getting the beef seared. I wanna sear it on all sides, and I wanna take my time doing this. This is developing the flavor, um, the Maillard reaction as we uh, sear it, and I really wanna take my time doing that. I wanna get each piece nice and brown. So I'm gonna just lay this right in my pot there. Now, depending on the size and the shape of your ribs, you may be able to get them all in at once. You may have to do them in, in uh, batches, but I think I can get all of these in. Now, the, you know, because of the way that the pot is, there's not a lot of oil in the very center. That's fine, don't worry about that. What I do is go over to the side, grab a little oil on the beef, and then move it over to the center. It's gonna be just fine. All that goodness out there. All right, perfect. Now, you leave that alone. Leave it alone for a good five minutes. We want to sear and brown that side. We will flip and do it again. And I do all four sides and the end. So I'm gonna be here for probably about, I'd say 15 minutes or so, getting a good sear on all the pieces. So I'll go ahead and do that, and then we'll come back, get the rest of the ingredients in, and we'll go under pressure. All right, so once I go on to the last side, I go ahead and start adding in the other ingredients. So I'm gonna put in my onions now and put in my mushrooms. I'm gonna put in six cloves of garlic that I've just peeled and lightly smashed. The other four are for the mashed cauliflower. The equivalent of one sprig of rosemary, I don't even take it off the stems or anything. The reason why this looks like it's more is because some of it was turning a little dark, so I got the best parts of, uh, of the sprigs, and it equals about one. No, no need to be um, precise about that. The other thing you can do is you can use dried rosemary if you need to. I would just use between a quarter and a half of a teaspoon because it is kind of a strong spice. But here, that would equal about half of a tablespoon if I chopped it up. All right, so now our beef is nicely brown. We are coming up to about the 10 cup mark on our six and a half quart ninja foodie, okay? And that's gonna come into play in just a few minutes, so I've, I'm mentioning that on purpose. All right, next ingredient that we need to put in is our beef stock. I'm using one cup of beef stock. That's gonna deglaze the pot, so I am gonna go down and scrape with my tongs here. It's also gonna cool things down just a little bit. And then any bits of the beef or the seasonings or anything that might have been stuck on the bottom will come off right now. And then the last ingredient that I add in for our country beef ribs is two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. So we're gonna put that in. And that's it. So I'm gonna stop here and say, if you wanted to do more ribs, like you know, five pounds of ribs instead of two and a half like I have here, you absolutely can. You don't have to double your liquid. Stick with one cup of liquid. You can add in another onion. You can add as many onions or mushrooms as you want or can fit in the pot. That's perfectly fine. And then you would go under pressure, but your ribs would be up to here. So you would not be able to get anything on top. So if you want to increase the beef, perfectly fine. Just cook it for 30 minutes, but don't plan on making potatoes on top or mush mashed cauliflower or anything like that because you're going to run out of room. All right, now ordinarily what I would do if I wanted to layer something in the Ninja Foodi, and you know I use the six and a half quart quite a bit, and that is so if I can make it in the six and a half quart, you can make it in the eight quart, that's for sure. Um, but I went back and forth about whether or not I should use the six and a half quart in this video or whether I should do the eight quart because it would have been a little bit easier for me to use the eight quart, and I thought, 
Easy isn't gonna cut it, Louise, because there's gonna be people that have the six and a half quart and they wanna layer their, these ingredients. They're gonna need your workaround. So we're gonna, I'm gonna explain that in just a minute. The rack, this is what I would normally use. I would say put the rack, you know, in the high position, which you can absolutely get this and nestle it down to give you some room. If you're doing something like rice on top, so brown rice, you could probably do brown rice with this recipe. It's a long cook time, 30 minutes, but I think the brown rice would probably be okay. Cauliflower, doesn't matter, we're gonna mash it. Potatoes, doesn't matter, we're gonna mash those. Um, so 30 minutes would be fine. But because the cauliflower, you know, to fit in enough, that would be a good serving size for this amount of beef ribs, you're sitting up, even if I push this way down, you're sitting way too high to be able to go under pressure. You're not gonna get your lid on. So this is where we get a little bit creative, okay? So let me go ahead and grab this out. So the rack isn't going to work, all right? Now, if you had the eight quart, the rack might be just fine for you. And if you're not using, you know, big pieces of cauliflower like this, you might be able to use the rack as well. You put some potatoes cut up, you know, diced up smaller. Okay, so that's perfectly fine. But if you run into this issue and you're like, oh, but I really want to put like a larger pan, because of course, if I take this size, eight inch fat daddy o pan versus the six inch pan, I could actually get some more cauliflower in here, but I can also lower the profile. So now it's not bunched up and sticking up, it's a little bit flatter. But this will not fit on this and have the lid go on, okay? So this is what we do. We take the basket legs off, nestle them down in there, okay? Make sure they're clean, obviously. And I'm gonna cover this before we go under pressure, but I just wanted to show you. And then you can sit your pan on top and you have more clearance. Now the pressure lid will go on. It doesn't matter that we're over the max fill line because this is not liquid ingredients. We're not gonna run into any trouble, but we have enough clearance now that we can put the lid on, okay? So six and a half quarts gonna work fine. Eight quarts probably gonna be a little bit easier. All right, now to make my mashed cauliflower at the end, I wanna have some seasonings and things in here already. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in four cloves of garlic. I'm just gonna put those right down in the bottom. And I'm gonna add in about, let's say, I'm gonna use a half of a teaspoon of salt. I can adjust that, but I do wanna salt the cauliflower now. And then I can add more if I need to. So that was half of a teaspoon. And then I'll just do a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. And I also want to put in some cream cheese. Now I can add butter, I could add all kinds of things at the end. I'm gonna go ahead and add the cream cheese now so that it melts and goes into that cauliflower as it pressure cooks. Now I have no idea if this is gonna be any good because it's the first time I've done this, but we're gonna find out together and I bet it's gonna be delicious. All right. Now, I know a lot of people don't like to use foil. You have to cover it with something, and because we're above the, you know, we're above the line of the pan, we're above that, the silicone lids aren't gonna cut it this time. So you don't have to use foil, but you do wanna try to find something because we're going under pressure for 30 minutes. If you let water, a lot of water, go into your pan, you're gonna have really, really mushy, mashed cauliflower and that's not going to be ideal okay because we want these to mimic our fluffy mashed potatoes so we want them to be nice and dry so definitely i recommend the foil with this one all right then go ahead carefully set that right there do a little look around because i'm famous for forgetting an ingredient or two but i think we're good and now we put the pressure lid on and it's steamy in this pot. So if you run into a little bit of like where it's pushing up against, you may have to put your palm back here and your uh, palm up here of your other hand and just sort of gently coax it into place. That happens sometimes. All right, we wanna make sure that our valve is to the seal position. Then we're gonna switch functions. We're gonna go to pressure cook High is what we want, and we want our time to be 30 minutes. And hit start. All right, there we go. So now we're under pressure. We're gonna stand under pressure for 30 minutes, which is going to 
tenderize those beef country ribs. They're gonna be, oh my gosh, so good. Now, if you wanted to add uh, an extra depth of flavor, let, let's say you really love your pot roast with red wine, you can do that. So you could add in a little bit of red wine uh, in place of the beef broth. So I wouldn't go a whole cup of red wine, but if you wanted to add like a quarter cup of red wine to three quarters cup beef stock, absolutely be my guest, throw it in there. I just wanted to keep it without the alcohol this time just because that's not gonna be low carb if you put the alcohol in there. All right, so what we have now, we have the beef ribs on the bottom with the mushrooms and the onions and the liquid is going to create the base for our gravy. If you want to make the gravy traditionally, the easiest way to do that is with a uh, cornstarch slurry. So I would add about two tablespoons of cornstarch to about a tablespoon and a half to two tablespoons of cold water. Mix it up so it's real smooth and at the end of pressure cooking pour that in and just let it put the sear saute on and let it uh, come up to a nice simmer and then it'll thicken up for you okay. But we're not gonna do that because we're going down the low carb road today. So as soon as this is done pressure cooking, I will show you how to make the most delicious low carb gravy. Oh my gosh, you'll never know it's low carb. It's so, so good. All right, I'm gonna do an immediate release. Don't worry, I'll explain why it's perfectly fine to do this even though there's meat in there in just a minute. <laughs> Okay, once the pin in the back has dropped, you can open up the lid. Always do that away from you. It is extremely steamy in here. And I like to use the lid as a little shield. So what I'm gonna do is add in about one tablespoon of butter to this. And now our cauliflower should be very, very soft, so let's hope just gonna go through. Yeah, it's pretty soft. You know, honestly, it's not as soft as I expected it to be um, after 30 minutes of pressure cook time. So you know what I would definitely do is I would cut those florets a little bit smaller, guys. I am shocked. I mean, this is going through it, but it's not, it's not like turning it into really mush like I thought it would. When things don't work out, you know what we do? We improvise. So I don't think this is gonna make a delicious mashed cauliflower, but guess what it's going to make? Oh my gosh, I cannot get over how perfect this looks for an all gratin type of cauliflower. You know, the cauliflower is soft enough, but I think it's gonna have a bite and kind of get that feel of a potato. So I'm gonna just grab this spoon real quick and just give it a little taste so I can find out, do I need to add more seasoning before I put the cheese on top? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, this is so amazing. It's like I just discovered something new. I mean, I am so excited about this. I'm sure there's a thousand recipes for all gratin cauliflower, but let me just tell you, the textures and the flavors in this one are oh, spot on. Okay, so how are we gonna get this done? First off, let me grab some cheese. I'm gonna use some sh uh, shredded cheddar cheese I'm just gonna put on top here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make the gravy, and then we're going to broil up the cheese on top. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait. This is gonna be amazing. All right, I just used sharp cheddar pre-shredded because I had no idea I was gonna do this, so I didn't shred any. And now I'm just gonna put this back on the foil just to keep it a little warm here while we make the gravy. So to make the gravy, I'm gonna have to pull this out, but I do wanna leave, I wanna leave it right here because I'm gonna need to put it back in so I can put my pan back in. I'm also going to take my beef out now this looks so amazing. You know what? We don't have to take our beef out. I did that before when I did the cornstarch slurry, but we're not doing the cornstarch slurry, so I think it's gonna be fine for me to leave the beef in. And if it isn't, I'll tell you how to fix that too. But I think it's just gonna be fine. 
All right, so how do we thicken this up and make a delicious gravy without flour or cornstarch or something that is higher in carbs? We're gonna use xanthan gum. Xanthan gum is a magical thickening ingredient that I just love to use. Use it a lot in ice creams because it gives the right type of texture to the ice cream. And I also use it when I'm making a keto style gravy. But the important thing to remember about xanthan gum is A, does not need to be heated to thicken. B, you just can't throw it in the pot or you'll end up with one big clump right in the middle. You have to add it in and mix it with something. And what you need to mix it with is some sort of a fat. It doesn't matter what kind of a fat, could be butter or any kind of oil. I just have one teaspoon of avocado oil here and a half of a teaspoon of xanthan gum. Now that might not be enough. I might need to add more and that will vary depending on how many cups of gravy you're gonna make. Like this, the liquid is up to the seven cup mark. So I might need a little bit more, but we're gonna start with this because you can always thicken it more, but if you over thicken it, then you have to add in more broth, changes your seasoning ratios, and you know you just end up keep chasing it. So start off slow, half of a teaspoon to one teaspoon of oil, and then we can go up from there if we need to. So just mix this together, and you'll see it start to clump up, but once it starts to mix in with the fat, it'll become a nice, smooth, slightly thickened liquid, but it's still like, I would say it's almost the consistency, I don't know, gosh, it's not like, it's not as thick as corn syrup. That's kind of what it reminds me of, but it's a little bit thinner than that. It's not as thick as honey either. All right, that looks good. And now we'll just take my little whisk here and we will add this in. Now, the other thing is, there's a lot of fat in here. So if you wanted to, instead of using the extra avocado oil, you could skim the fat off the top. I definitely could have done that. All right. It's already thickening up, but I think I'm gonna need a little bit more. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Wow. Let me see if I can show you guys. I should have shown you before and after, right? But let's see, let's get this out. Let's do it this way. All right, so before it was really, really thin. Now you can see it's still thin, but it is thicker. It is definitely thicker. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add in, I'm thinking an, a full teaspoon of the xanthan gum. So that'll be a total of one and a half teaspoons with a little bit more of the fat. I think that's gonna get a nice thick gravy there. Oh my gosh, so, so good. All right, now I'm only gonna put half of this in because it might thicken too much. So I'll put half of it in. Gonna give it a nice stir around. All right, that looks, that looks pretty good. So it's gonna take a few minutes to thicken, so before I add the rest of it, why don't we go ahead and put that back on top, close the crisping lid. We are gonna go on air crisp, or you could do broil, either one would be fine. I'm gonna use air crisp. I'm gonna set it for 375 degrees for about 10 minutes. All right, we just have about two and a half minutes left, so let's take a peek and see how it's browning. And what I see is the cheese is melted, obviously. Some of the cauliflower is browning a little bit, but you know the cheese isn't really browning that much. So this is when I would say if you want brown cheese, switch functions, and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna switch over to the broil and just hit start, but it's only gonna take maybe two minutes or so. So we haven't extended the time, we've just changed the uh, function and go on to a higher heat. Hopefully you'll get a little bit of brown bubbly cheese on the top there. And yeah, it's getting a little bit more brown. I would probably go on broil uh, from the beginning if you wanted it nice and brown and bubbly, but this is gonna be just fine. So now remove your pan. Now you can do this like I'm doing with these tongs, or you can of course put on some mitts and do it that way. Then I'm gonna get 
my basket legs out and put over there. Then let's see how thick. Oh, I think that gravy's plenty thick. Okay, so I would not add in anymore. So one teaspoon of the xanthan gum was plenty. All right, so let's go ahead and dish these out. Put that right in there for the cauliflower. And we'll get these ribs out. Oh my gosh. Wow. Oh, this is amazing. Oh my gosh. Beautiful. Now there's still some gravy in there. I'm not gonna worry about dishing that out. I'm gonna turn this off. And guess what? With the leftovers here, you could certainly make shredded beef with the gravy, or you could make you know, a pseudo beef stew with some keto-friendly vegetables if you wanted. You could thin it out and make beef soup. Oh my gosh, there's so many things you can do. But the most important thing always is how does it taste? So let's go ahead and Give the beef ribs a try here. Look at that. Now, if it worked out perfectly, I should have, I should be able to cut this with a fork and it should be super beefy and super, super tender. So let's see. Yes, you can cut it with a fork. Look at that. Now, right down here, I'm gonna tell you, there is a little bit of a piece that I'm meeting some resistance. So let's just see, but it did go, I could cut it with a fork. Probably not as tender as the last batch I made. But let's just go ahead and, oh my gosh, no, see, there we go. That is what I'm talking about. That came apart perfectly. So there must have been just some connective tissue down there that just wasn't, uh, wasn't rendered enough. You could definitely go up to 45 minutes on this cook time if you wanted to make sure that, that didn't happen to you. But 30 minutes is what worked before for me. And it looks like all the rest of it's really nice. So I think it's right about there that I keep hitting resistance. So I think the 30 minutes is still perfectly good and I just love the way this tastes so much. Now let's get a little gravy and some mushrooms on it. I just wanna show you this luxurious gravy that is totally low carb. And of course our cauliflower. Like, I'm so excited about this. I think I'm more excited about the cauliflower au gratin than I am the country ribs because I've already tested the country ribs. I know they're delicious. But this texture, guys, it looks like shredded potatoes. Like, I am super excited about this. So I am going to give that a try first. Hopefully it's not too hot for me. Oh my gosh, I am in love with this. You're gonna see this as a standalone recipe on my website very soon. Oh my. Mm. Amazing. All the seasonings are great. So I didn't add any more salt and pepper. That little bit of cream cheese, perfect. A Little bit of butter. Oh my gosh, the cheese, perfect. All right, let's get a mushroom. Mmm, mmm. So good. All right, so now for this, the beef that is going to replace pot roast for me forever. Mm. It is not tough at all. It pretty much melts in your mouth. But it's so beefy, it's so delicious. And I do not feel like I'm eating low carb at all. I mean, this is something that you would crave for real comfort, you know, that high carb type of food. Mm. Add in some sauteed green beans or steamed green beans or, or broccoli and you have got yourself one great meal. 
So if you wanna make it the low carb way or you wanna make it the traditional way with a cornstarch slurry, the instructions are pretty much the same. You just switch out the cornstarch for the xanthan gum for the low carb version and it's the same recipe. Switch out cauliflower for potatoes if you wanna do it low carb. If you wanna have delicious mashed potatoes, just cut them into chunks, put them in the pan, just like I did. You could put a little bit of water in the bottom if you wanted. 30 minute pressure cook's gonna be just fine. Then make sure they're nice and dry, mash them up like you ordinarily would, and you will have country ribs and mashed potatoes. But I'm telling you, give this one a try, it's delicious. As always, make it yours, make it delicious, and keep it real.